صباح الخير برحب بالجميع مناقشة مشروع التخرج بعنوان Enhancing Demand for Fast Beauty Arena and Neural Network Hybrid Beauty Hybrid طلاب اللي هم رؤى الميمي قيس بيوفش ومحمد المعسول برحب بالدكتور هشام مؤخر الدكتور مراد السموري بدفني انا الدكتور حازم الكيلاني برحب بالاهالي والطلاب One of the methods that we used for forecasting was ARIMA. ARIMA is a statistical method that we simply use for forecasting in the presence of a time series. ARIMA stands for autoregressive, integrated, and moving average. Now, first of all, as I said, we have three parts of ARIMA, the AR, I, and the MA. We're going to be using three letters to denote them, D, D, and Q, respectively. And in the event that, the, that our data has seasonality, we're going to be using P, G, Q, uppercase, in addition to the initial three letters. Um, this is an example, basically, that explains what seasonality is. It is when a variation occurs at an interval, such as every week or every month. We start with the autoregressive part. Now, we should not confuse this with regression, which we took in our applied statistics course. Regression here in this graph is basically when we study the correlation between an independent variable and a dependent variable, such as, let's say, an ind independent variable could be the temperature of the weather, while a dependent variable could be the sales of bottled water. So in that case, we would be able to perform predictions on that sale. Now, here we have the formula of what an, a typical autoregressive formula would look like. So we have a constant term, an error, and in between we have these terms. These are obtained from the, the following graph. This is a PASCF, partial autocorrelative uh, function. What we can see is that any value outside of these two bands is considered statistically different. That means it does have a correlation and would be considered in our formula. We arrive to the second part of ARIMA, I, which is integrated. It simply implies that there was differencing. Basically, we're using the current observation that we have and subtracting it from the previous one. From this step, we transform our data that might have trend into one that is stationary. Stationary implies that this data has um, constant uh, para statistical parameters, such as mean or variance, regardless of the time. Now, this is what a first order integrative function would look like, which is simply the difference. A second level, on the other hand, would look something like this. You'll notice that this is not <coughs> the difference from two periods, but instead the difference of the first difference. Finally, we have moving average denoted by Q. It is when the model relies on the relationship between the current data point and the error from previous ones. Uh, here's an example of the function. We'll notice that the forecast equals the mean plus a multiplicative factor times the error from a previous time point. Of course, we use the uh, software Minitab, which is a statistical tool to perform the ARIMA analysis. This is what the um, interface looked like. So we inserted the different parameters, such as seasonality, uh, PDQ, whether non-seasonal or seasonal, as well as the number of desired forecasts. As for the combinations, what we did was um, try trial and error. So since we have six letters or parameters, each of which could be either a zero or a one, we would end up with 64 combinations. This example is, is only for the zero, 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 and the table goes on. We start with company A. In this model, we had the sales data from the company for, for 2017 and 2018, and 10 months of 2019. We use the seasonality factor of 12. This is because the data that was provided to us was collected on a, or obtained on a monthly basis. So for each year, we had 12 data points. Of course, we, um, using this Excel, Excel dashboard, we, we compared between the errors. And we, of course, plotted them and compared them to each other along with the original sales. Uh, of course, the output or the best performing model was chosen based on two criteria. 
The first one would be the least error. In this case, root mean squared error. And the second was this way. How, how close was the graph, or how, how much resembling it was to the actual sales? Here we have the results of the first product from company A. This table shows the best performing combinations with the least error. In this case, the term 0, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0 was the best. This is PDQ non-seasonal and PDQ seasonal. So when we look at this graph, we'll notice that the x-axis represents the time in months. We had nine months in 2019. And the y-axis represents the sales in tons. The original graph, or the actual sales, is in orange, and the forecast through ARIMA is the blue one. Um, um, you'll notice that the ARIMA was able to capture the general trend. Wherever there was an increase, ARIMA was able to predict that. Another example is product A2. It is here the same concept. Um, the cells in green are the best performing ones. You'll notice that this performance is quite good, actually. Uh, another example, finally, for company A, is the same concept. You'll notice that, once again, Arima was able to capture the general trend despite some inaccuracies. Now we arrive at company B. This is somewhat different. What we had, or what we ended up doing, was forecasting four months, August through November. To forecast each month, we used the three previous months. Yani, now we at November, October, September, August the three previous months. In this case, seasonality, the seasonality factor was a factor of seven. This is because data was obtained on a daily basis. So at the end of each month, we had about 30 data points. Um, in this case, we used the mean absolute percentage error to calculate the, the error and compare. And the rest is the, pretty much the same methodology. <coughs> so we said that we forecasted four months, August, through November, each day that corresponds to one of these months. This graph combines all of these results. On the x-axis, again, we have time, except that it is in days. On the y-axis, we have the sales. However, it is not in tons, just like company A, but instead, number of items sold. Um, obviously, we have four segments. We have four different parameters or combinations. One thing we'll notice is that Arima was able to predict the uh, the weekly drop of sales to zero. Um, the orange plot is the prediction, the arima, and the blue one would be the actual. So you'll notice that it was able to predict them correctly. In addition to that, arima was able to capture an increase, for example here, and the rest, except that the magnitude wasn't the same. And finally, this was a problem that we faced in other models, is that arima sometimes gave results that are shifted, either leading or lagging. So in this case, both graphs, the ARIMA and the forecasted, are identical. However, here, we notice that it's leading a little bit. So I will now take on. The conclusion with shown place. So this table uh, shows the root mean squared error, or basically the error. Uh, in the case of company A, here we have the three different products. So we were lucky to obtain some results from ARIMA. However, in the case of artificial neural networks, the results weren't satisfactory due to the high error, which leads us to the conclusion that uh, in the case of ARIMA, the optimal size of the data would be medium to small, whereas in the artificial neural networks, it requires a large set of data. <coughs>